Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Betts. I'm one of the anchors at CGTN and we are on the road today doing some sightseeing around China and at a very impressive attraction today. It's a major tourist attraction, but also a major part of the Chinese economy, a major part of its bragging rights and a major thing to look at. It is the Three Gorges Dam, one of the largest structures ever built by man on earth. It is enormous. It is something I have personally always wanted to see. So I'm very excited that today we get to show it to you live here on our social media apps. We're also gonna bring in some guests that we have with us to kind of give us some background on what the dam is about, what makes it special, what makes it different. It's a huge structure, cost about $23 billion, opened, began operation in 2003 fully finished construction in 2006. Let's bring in our guest here. Come on over guys. Thanks for being with us today. We have with us Young Xia. She's a senior engineer with the Three Gorges Dam. She does not speak English, so we're gonna have some translation, so bear with us on that, okay? We also have Shin Dan. He does speak English for us. He also works here and does a lot of tours and knows a lot about the, um, the operation here. So we are gonna show you the dam, by the way. We're working our way towards it. Um, we want to give you an idea of kind of what this park is like first off, because this is a major tourist attraction, right, Dan? This is this is a huge uh, attraction for a lot of Chinese people that come here and want to see this in person, right? Absolutely. Each year we get uh, millions of the visitors that came from the other places to see these impressive projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the visitors may have uh, three different stops. First, they may climb up to the observation tower to take a bird's eye view of the three gorgeous dam site. And then they can go to the beginning of the dam crest to take a closer view of the reservoir height behind, including to see the most technical part of the dam called the ship lift, ship elevator. The locks, right? As a locks and the ship elevator, two navigation facilities. And right here, it is another stop. People can take a close look about the main dam project. Why do people want to come and see this dam so badly? Because what is it about this dam that attracts so much attention? Because this is a kind of the very, very impressive project. You can compare it to the Great Wall in Beijing. Very impressive, huge dam built across the Yangtze River. Chinese people dream this for almost a hundred years. And that is some interesting perspective on this because I didn't realize that this has been a dream to dam the Yangtze River. It's a, by the way, for a lot of people don't realize it's a huge river. It's one of the world's largest rivers. It'd be like trying to dam the Mississippi River if you're in the United States. So this is something that the Chinese people have been talking about for a long time, debated for decades and decades, took two decades to build it, and then became a reality. Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Chinese people built the three gorgeous dam from early 1992 to 2009. Mm -hmm. Took about 17 years and to build the project. Folks, finally, we get to show it to you. Yeah. There it is in all of its glory, the three gorgeous dam. Yeah. What do you think when you see it every time you come here? Are you impressed looking at it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you pay attention for the middle section that is called the spillway, Mm -hmm. So during the rain season, flood season can open the spillway for discharge the flood water. On the both side, that is the powerhouses, with the 32 sets of turbine generating units already been built, been put into operation. At another end of the dam, that is a ship lift elevator. And uh, beyond the So we're talking about mountain. that huge, so just to be clear, that huge concrete structure that looks like a big office tower, honestly, the big gray cement block. You keep calling that a ship elevator. Ship meaning, elevator. <laughs> I mean, the ships start out at the top there of the um, dam and then come all the way down to water level in one ride, correct? Right. And that's what kind of ships can fit into something like that? Uh, basically less than 3,000 tons of the ferry pleasure boat, including some barges, may take this uh, ship lift elevator. Otherwise, go through the five-stage ship lock will take for more than three and a half to four hours. Ship lift elevator can make it much quicker, faster, in roughly 35 to 40 minutes to pass the project. And that is important because the Yangtze is a major waterway for ship traffic, for cruise traffic. Ocean-going ships can go all the way from the ocean, Shanghai, all the way up to Chongqing, correct? Uh, so Which far, is quite a long journey. Uh, yeah, so far for more than like about 10, 12, 15 thousand tons of the big uh, cruise ships take care of like four, five hundred visitors. 
uh, spend about uh, 14, 15 days here traveling from Shanghai, Nanjing to Chongqing. It's quite a journey. I'd like to do it one day. People do it on cruises, right? Two weeks it takes to make that trip from the ocean to Chongqing, uh, yeah, which is weeks. very inland. All right, let's bring in Miss Yangsha. Sorry to ignore you for the last couple of moments here. Um, you're, you're one of the engineers here, and you really focus on trying to protect the environment as well. So tell me a little bit about your work and what you focus on here. Well,我所从事的工作是水库的水环境保护工作,包括下游的水质保护。那么在三峡水库,我们开展了持续的水环境监测,包括了这个淡林的各种指标,然后为应对这个库区的水环境问题,我们还开展了这个水滑的监测和
啊，对于恢复这个四四大家鱼自然种群具有重要的作用。After the dam being built in Yichang, in this area, we also built the sturgeon fish hatchery in recent years, already re, uh, released for more than five million sturgeons back into the river. So far, it all gets survived. I mean, what is it like for her working here? Give me a personal take on, you know, what is it like for you? How much do you enjoy your work here? Are you impressed when you come and look at this dam? It's kind of interesting and fun to work at a big project like this, but it's also a major tourist attraction as we're seeing with some of the folks walking around us today. Yeah. Uh, 他觉得您的这个工作, 虽然说不能产生非常大的经济效益，但是它这个对于呃保持这个水库水库以及长江流域生态环境健康是具有非常重要的意义的。所以我也感觉到在这里工作是非常荣幸的。She already been doing this for ten years, you know, working on the environment protection himself is very proud of this. Mm -hmm. What about for you? What do you think about working here? And when you look at this dam, I mean, you see it all the time, but. I imagine every time you look at it, it's kind of stir some inspiration, huh? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, each day we also take care of the tourists to see uh, what's going on right here, to introduce this very big and magnificent project mm -hmm. to everybody to show this uh, kind of the new, like a great wall for Chinese people. Is that how you look at it? Like, uh, the, like a modern great wall? Yeah, uh, more than great wall, I think so. It is a great wall. It's, it's a huge concrete structure and it does stir a lot of passion and um, an interest, I must say. What is it that you're most struck by when you look at this? Well, I look at this because I've been doing this for 22 years. Uh, when I was the first time been walking here, that's during the Yangtze River closure ceremony. So it became very beginning a small island called the Zhongbao Island, located in the center of the Yangtze River, diverts the river into two parts. And 17 years later, you, after, when you look at this, so you can create a, a mag project. A mega project. So yeah. you remember when this was being built? I got some folks taking photos. Ni hao. Hi. <laughs> um, ni hao. So you, were, you remember when this was being built? Yeah. And what did it look like? What was that like, watching just, this come together? Just uh, like a very small island at the front of us called the Zhongbao Island. So there used to be an island where these, these uh, gates are, I guess, uh, right? Yeah. That's what, what you're telling me? Okay. Yeah. It looks like a kind of the natural diversion separating the river to two parts. One is a sub-river, one is a main river course. Okay. And later the engineers found the bedrock here. It is a granite, hard and stable, Be best location to put this Magnificent project on Yangtze. Why did they choose this location? That's a good question. Uh, because with a kind of the river diversion during the construction, we diverted the river to this side of the Yangtze dam, as the main part, mm -hmm. to build a coffer dam mm -hmm. across the Yangtze River to make sure the river bed itself it is dry. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, cut us through the ridge, build a five-stage shiplock mm -hmm. opening for as a navigation facilities for mm -hmm. ships to mm -hmm. go through. Finally, construction corporation CTGC damned the diversion at this site. Now we do rebuild another powerhouse right here. So there, the work continues on the dam. It's never yeah. actually fully, fully, I guess, well, there's always maintenance and always improvements to be made, I guess. So when you bring tourists here, what, what do they ask about? What are they most struck by? What do they want to know? Uh, people want to know, is there any bigger project than the three gorgeous, pro, uh, three gorgeous dam? Uh, before this one being built in China, the biggest dam that is called the Itaipu, uh, built between Brazil to Paraguay. Yes. Itaipu. And another big one that's built in US called the Grand Coulee mm -hmm. on Columbia River. So far, Three Gorgeous Dam, it has become the biggest one in the world. It is used for more than 27 million cubic meters of the concrete for build a dam on Yangtze River. Uh, generating capacity as a 22,500 megawatts. Which makes it, if I understand correctly, this dam generates more electricity than any other dam in the world. Absolutely. If you look at the power grid, 
we are located in the very center part of the China. I mean, you can see, I'm not sure if our cameraman can pick it up, but there's power lines stretching, a lot of power lines stretching on the right side of the river here, and a lot of power lines on the left. All that's coming from this dam. Yeah, if you look at the map of China, we are located in the very center part of the China, almost a thousand kilometer as a diameter. So like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and uh, Chengdu, all can use the power green power from a dam on Yangtze River. It is. It's clean energy here, which is another important focus for the Chinese government. All right. Well, we are going to travel around a little bit. We're not done with our tour here. We're going to do something actually pretty special. We're going to go on to the Three Gorges Dam, which is not something that tourists get to do very often. So it's a really special treat for us. We're going to take a break here and be back in about 10, 15 minutes and show you the view from over there on top of the bridge, so stay with us here on CGTN.
the Three Gorges Project is a key national project that harnesses, develops, and protects the Yangtze River and is by far the world's largest water control project, delivering comprehensive benefits in the form of flood control, power generation, easier shipping navigation, and better water resource utilization. The Yangtze River, the mother river of the Chinese nation, has nurtured the illustrious Chinese civilization. But the Yangtze River Basin is frequently hit by floods due to its particular geographical and meteorological conditions, putting people on both sides of the river in danger. The Three Gorges Project was built to control the flooding of the Yangtze River, a centuries-old dream of the Chinese people. Back in 1918, Dr. Sun Yat-sen proposed the idea of harnessing the Yangtze River in the Three Gorges area. In the 1940s, American dam experts, invited by China, visited the site and proposed a plan to build a dam along the Three Gorges section. But the plan was later abandoned. After the founding of the People's Republic of China, tens of thousands of scientists worked for decades on the engineering survey, research, design, and demonstration of the Three Gorges project. In the 1970s, construction of the Gujuaba Water Control Project kicked off, laying a solid foundation for the Three Gorges project. In April 1992, the National People's Congress passed the resolution on the construction of the Three Gorges Project on the Yangtze River, officially marking the beginning of construction for the gigantic project. The Three Gorges Project comprises three major parts, the dam project, the relocation project, and the power transmission and transformation projects. The dam part of the Three Gorges project is made up of a dam, a hydropower station, and navigational structure. The Three Gorges dam is a concrete gravity dam with an axis of 2,309 meters and a crest elevation of 185 meters. The reservoir has a regular water storage level of 175 meters and a corresponding storage capacity of 39.3 billion cubic meters. Flood storage capacity is 22.15 billion cubic meters. Since its inception, the project has effectively and efficiently improved flood control and disaster alleviation in the Yangtze River Basin and fundamentally improved the flood control situation in the river's middle and lower reaches. During 2020's flood season, the Three Gorges Reservoir encountered the largest flood since its completion. But through strategic operations, the project greatly alleviated flood pressure on the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River and helped protect residents' lives and livelihoods. With 34 hydraulic turbines, the Three Gorges Hydropower Station boasts a total installed capacity of 22,500 megawatts, making it the world's largest hydropower station. The station has installed 12,193 kilometers of ultra-high voltage AC-DC transmission lines, transmitting electricity to half of China. The Three Gorges Hydropower Plant is designed to generate 88.2 billion kilowatt hours of electricity annually, contributing significantly to reducing global carbon emissions and protecting the environment. The project's maritime navigational... Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Jonathan Betts, back with my guest here, and we are actually on the Three Gorges Dam. It's pretty cool. <laughs> this is quite an impressive structure and not a lot of people get to be on the dam. This is not open to tourists, correct? Yes. So we're going to give you a very special tour here of what it's like. It's kind of hard to tell you're actually on a dam, mainly because it's so 
big. It's so wide and it honestly kind of looks like a shipping port because it has all of these huge cranes lining the top of it. So as we walk around here, let me bring in our guest. We have Yang Sha. She's one of the engineers here who works at the Three Gorges Dam and also Shin Don. He also works here in the area and does a lot of tours and is helping us with the translation. So Shin Don, let me ask you, kind of walk us through what we're looking at here. Why all these cranes on top of the dam? Well, Jonathan, now we've already standing on the dam crest. We call it as a 185 meter platform because so far we are standing at the elevation 185 meters above Shanghai, above the sea level. 185 meters above sea level we yeah. are right now. So okay, and how tall is this dam? 185 meter. Got 185. It. And from beginning to the end of it, it's a length of the dam. It is 2,300 meters, 2.3 kilometers. Yeah, it's extremely long. That's about a mile and a half for those of you who use that system. It's, it's a long dam. It's as tall as a skyscraper, correct? Yes. And as we approach the edge here, we're going to peer over and we're going to look at the upstream side of the dam. This is what's holding back all the water. And right now, how deep is the river behind us here? Well, Jonathan, we're looking at the reservoir hide behind the dam. Today is a water level right here. It is 166. 166. Is that high or low or about right? Uh, so far, water level keep rising almost to the maximum. Maximum level right here will be 175 at the end of the October. 175, so that's still very far below the top where we're standing, correct? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and we have seen a lot of rain recently, so that's why I was kind of curious. But today it's a beautiful, hot day. And give us an idea of the view here. We're looking at the city. This is also, I think, the hometown, if I'm correct, of Chu yep. Yuan, yep. who is a very famous poet in Chinese history. Yes? That's right, Jonathan. So tell me about the view here and what we're seeing on the banks of the Yangtze River. Uh, well, Jonathan, if you pay attention for the left side, you can see there's a temple right there. Here. I do. Uh, the white a, structure uh, surrounded by the greenery, yes? That okay. is a temple of Chu Yuan, famous poet 2,000 years ago. Uh, today, for the Chinese lunar calendar, May fix. Uh, that's in June, June 14th, we do have the Chinese Dragon Boat Festival 2,000 years ago. We start from here. He is a poet that killed himself in this river, correct, as legend says, and people would throw the zongzi, zong which is like a sticky rice treat. Rice dumpling. In, rice dumpling, yes, <laughs> rice dumpling. into the river to try to keep the fish from eating his body, correct? That's part That's of the right. legend here. But every year it's celebrated with dragon boat festivals, with Zongzi, um, an important part of Chinese history and also a major attraction for a lot of people in China, yes? Uh, that's right. And so tell us about kind of what else we're looking at here. What are some of the big attractions to you? What are people? What is it that people like to see when they're coming here to the dam? Uh, can you see the far side that's the cruise ship stuck there? I do yeah. see the cruise ships, yeah. Yeah, this is for oh. transfer the take care of the visitors, spend about four nights to your along the Yangtze River, docked here from tomorrow morning. See so well traveling go upstream to Chongqing. Heading away from us. Yep. I mean that's also fascinating to think about that this is such a big river that this ah, dam, yeah. you know, splits in half and it is big enough that we are many, 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 many kilometers from the coast, yeah. but huge cruise ships can sail on this river. Ah yeah. Because after the dam being built, you can see the Yangtze has become much uh, wider and uh, much deeper. From here, we do create a reservoir at uh, 670 kilometers, almost uh, 400 miles to Chongqing. And including for this mountain areas, Chinese, we call it the Three Gorges area, Three Gorges. This is the first section of the Three Gorges we call it the Xilin Gorge, 70 kilometers. Uh, Second gorge, it is called as Wu, W, Wu Gorge. Last one called as Chi Tian. So together we call it as three gorges. And as you point out, this is an enormous lake that was not here before. The river was a lot shallower and narrower than it is now. And that was part of the, what came with this dam is a million people were relocated, if I understand right. correctly. Yep. Lots of villages, historical sites uh, were flooded by the backwater here. I mean, overall, when you look at the pros and cons of this, of this dam, of this project, how do you weigh between the two? Uh, well, at the same time, after the three gorges dam being built, dam stream, mm -hmm. More than 20 to 25 million Chinese people can get survived during the rain season, flood season, including after the reservoir being built. It do create this reservoir, 400 miles long, 600 kilometers, do create 1.3 million 
uh, Chinese farmers are relocated. If you look at the upstream, mm -hmm. that is called the Zigui, New Resettlement Town. So just to be clear, the, all these high rises I'm seeing right here on the banks of the river, you're yeah. saying that was a new city built to resettle everybody. Uh, yeah, we call this a new town because the old town of Zigui that's located at 38 kilometers upstream from another bank, height at the foot of the mountain. Today, people relocate to here. And so that, the old town is now underwater. Yeah. And do you know how deep the water is there at the old town? Almost 80 meters. You're kidding. 80 meters below this water level. That's incredibly deep. Oh, wow. Um, and what do they do? They actually tear down the buildings or do the buildings still exist? No. All or tore down before yeah. they uh, finish the construction on this project. I mean, it's quite a jam. Let's continue walking around. Let's look more at these. So I'm not sure if I understood correctly the cranes that are behind us here, these big red cranes. Do you know what they're there for? How they're, uh, how, what, the, what, what they do? It's a crane that's for control the spillway gates hide underneath. So is this how they open the spillway gates? Yep. Really? So every time they need to open one of the gates, they put the cranes into operation and it lifts up the gates so that the, the water can be water. released into um, the Yangtze River. And we are walking on something. What is this? Can we walk on this? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It's safe, Jonathan. I'll let you try. go first. I mean, <laughs> it's, um, it's probably hard to see on camera, folks, but it's a very, very long drop down there. <laughs> We're walking on a metal grate here to get to the other side of the dam. Um, it's like walking on those glass bridges in China, which are also really popular, and I don't like to do that either. It always makes some me uncomfortable. Some of the gates for discharge the flood of water, some of the gates for control the sluice gates. Discharge yes. the silt, the sedimentation, hide behind it there. Unreal. All right, well, let's uh, bring in Yang Xia here, since uh, I want to hear more about her work here and what she does here on the dam. As we walk to the other side here, she, I know she focuses a lot on water quality. Help us understand what does that mean, the water quality, and why is that so important? Because people cannot live without the water supply, so water quality is very important for people live along the Yangtze River. Ah, oh, good point. And this is, I mean, this is the killer view right here. I mean, now we are really high up. Now we're on the downstream uh, side of the Cree Gorges Dam, and it is a very high. <laughs> high. It's a very long drop from here. Uh, to give you kind of an idea of what you just saw there, the water was a lot closer to us than it is here. It just, it's, it's, it's so big. It's hard to really keep it in perspective, just the scale of this. And it's hard to really pick it up on camera, honestly, um, because it's so wide and it's so tall. Also, the power, that's the power plate you were talking about, yeah, correct? Yeah, there's a powerhouse on the both sides. We get two of them. On both sides? Yeah, so your left hand, that is a left bank a powerhouse with a 14 sets of turbine generating units. Okay. On your right hand side, it is a right bank with 12 units. There's another underground powerhouse, six more units. So 26 on the river and a six more hiding the underground powerhouse, 32. 32, and talk a little bit about, more about that. And we can ask Yang Xiao about that as well, because I know a big focus of the dam was flood control, but also power generation. This is green, clean energy here generated by this dam. How important is that to China's development? This 2020年,尤其是2020年,我们三峡电站的单座电站的年发电量突破了1100亿度电。那么这个也是创了单座电站年发电量的世界纪录的。那么我们从2003年到2002年,这个段时间我们的三峡电站发电量超过了1.4亿
Yeah, it's a major focus for the government. Uh, a lot of Chinese electricity comes from coal power plants. They're trying to shift to green energy. The goal is to be carbon neutral by the year 2060. And dams like this are part of that project here. So, Miss um, Yangsha, let me ask you here. Just you work here at the dam. You worked here for many, many years. What do you find most interesting about this? Uh, uh, Chinese <laughs> Uh, she's worked uh, for environmental protection sometimes. Yeah. They can opening more uh, turbines generators being put into operation to increase the volume of the water more flowing to dam stream may help the more fish can breathe in as a dam stream. Uh, when they open the floodgates, yeah. I bet you that is quite a sight when, in fact, let's peer over real quickly here. So looking, if we can, over the edge here, when these floodgates are open, that is water rushing through that, right? It comes out just be just beneath us. Ah, uh, yeah. Correct. In all these, in all these. Down below shoot, the dam crest, yeah, that is a spillway gaze. Mm -hmm. Opening this, just like a man-made waterfall. Like a man-made waterfall. <laughs> it is. It's a huge, and it's a huge waterfall. Sorry. Do they have they ever opened all of the gates at once? Do you uh, know? No. Usually during the rain season, flood season, like a few weeks ago. We open three gates for discharge the water. Three, yeah, because three, only three gates. we have had a lot of rain and uh, some bad flooding in China in recent weeks and months. Give us an idea of just how important flood control is on the Yangtze River. What was it like before the dam was built? Before when it comes to flooding, the dam was built. It is a dam stream. There's a called as a Jinjiang Levee. Okay. Only can hold the water back right there. But not as efficient. After the three gorges dam being built, it can control the flood water from 20 years ago, from 10 years flood frequency improved to 100 years. To 100 year flood, yeah. stopping that. It's not 100%, but it certainly makes a big difference in terms of quality of life for a lot of folks here. And this is one of several dams on the Yangtze River. Obviously, right. this is the biggest, right? But how yes. do the others compare? Uh, there are more dams. It is a upstream, something located in the Sichuan province, something located in the Yunnan province. Uh, two more dams also built by CTG, that's called the Xiangjiabao and the Xilodu in Sichuan. And, and are uh, they a fraction of the size of this, or...? Uh, two dams together, almost the same capacity like, like this one. Two dams? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, after three gorgeous dams being built, so far the second largest dam in the world, called the Baihe Tan Project. And where is that? That's in Yunnan province, that, and nearby that, Kunming. Is that See? under construction now? Under construction. So China is building the second largest dam now? Yeah, and Bai Hetan project. And when is that supposed to be finished? Do you know? Bai, Bai Hetan is now in construction. Next year. Uh, next year will be put into operation. And is that for flood control, electricity, both? Give us an idea of why they're building that one. Uh, Bai Hetan is mainly used to make flood control and the power generation. And how does it compare to this? I mean, this is already uh, so big. Uh, uh, the capacity of the three gorgeous dam is 22,500 megawatts. Our Baihatan project is 10,800 megawatts. Will it be half the size of this? Yeah. Okay. And also half the electricity generated there, but still incredibly large because 10,000 megawatts of generation is still a lot, right? A lot of dams don't even reach that level, and we're twice that level here on the Three Gorges. That's right. Unreal. Well, that is the view, folks. This is what it's like on top of the Three Gorges Dam. If you've ever, ever wondered, I've always wondered, and when I was assigned this project, I did not think that we would actually be able to step onto the dam and look at it here. It's quite a view. We're very lucky to be up here seeing it for me the first time. I know this is not the first time for you guys, but seeing part of China and a view from China that not a lot of folks can see. I mean, what do you think when you look at this view up here? It's got to be pretty special for you, right? Yeah, magnificent. Look at the high mountains down below. The Yangtze River floating, floating from here all the way down to Shanghai. 
It's incredible scenery as well. Yeah. You have, and that is also something that a lot of people don't realize with the Yangtze River is you look at these green mountains, these sheer cliff walls, um, you know, on, rising on top of it. It's also known for its just incredible natural beauty. That is right. And the bridge down there as well. What else do you think it is, we need to know about this dam? What are some of the big things that you want us to know when it comes to this project? That can go. That can be a question for either of you, honestly. We can ask her as well. Tasa的除了大巴以外，还有什么？就是比较什么三峡的伟伟大之处啊。嗯，三峡工程，刚刚我们说了啊，它是具有防巨大的防洪效益的啊，防洪发电效益是巨大。然后航运以及生呃补水
if I understand correctly, to release water into the Yangtze River, which helps, I think, lower the water temperature so that the fish can breed and it's not so stressful on fish like the sturgeon. If, is that correct? And if that if so, explain it to me. Uh, 对水温可能有一定的致温效应 啊，再加大下游流量，然后促促进这个鱼类自然繁殖。因为为什么要通过加大下游流量呢？因为这个鱼类自然繁殖，它是它是需要这个泡泉水，需要这个稳流的状态的啊。所以通过这个人造洪
gorgeous dam, one of the largest structures on Earth, one of the largest dams ever. It generates more electricity than any other dam in the world. And it's quite a view when you look over the side. Not a lot of people get to see it from this angle. So we want to thank you. Thank you guys for your time today. We want to thank you for tuning in. We'll have much more coverage on CGTN about the Three Gorges Dam and also China's efforts at protecting its biodiversity. So be sure to stay tuned to CGTN and also all our social media channels for more on that. But for now, that's all the time we have. So bye for now. Bye guys. Thanks.